Okay, so yes, I'm aware there were problems with the lab. Um, understand we are, and this is, this is by way of getting into a discussion. It's not actually an abject apology. Um, we are way, way, way past basic config <laughs> what we're doing. Even when you see something named basic dial plan, the system you're working on, just the one site, is full-blown IP router, firewall, switch, IP, uh, PBX, and voicemail. As I mentioned, ADTRAN builds that so that out of the box, it'll work for almost every environment with very little configuration. You know, basically, what they want, and they achieve it, is that you go in, add users, and this thing works. That's why there's a list of number complete templates as long as your arm. Yeah, me too, don't worry, <laughs> it's cold. Um, the problem is I'm trying to teach you dial planning. And so if you have a box that has two or three places you can look for number complete templates and things that look like number complete templates, it's going to be pretty hard to figure out what's going on. That's why I had you delete a lot of them. Um, we are necessarily, you've chosen to take, and take this course in a semester when basically we're rewriting it. Okay. Ordinarily, I mean, I've taught this for 13 years and I had the labs down pretty pat, <laughs> you know, so we've sort of upset that whole apple cart. So I'm going to make a change. I actually thought about this before we started the semester, thought, yeah, we can do it. No, we can't. I overstretched as to what I could do. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to admit the fact that basically what you're doing is beta testing labs for me, okay? You're 400 level students. I'm perfectly comfortable in your ability. I hope you know me, and most of you have had me for class before, and I hope you feel like you can trust me not to hang you out to dry on grade. I won't. <laughs> you know, if I make a mistake in a lab config that you can only get halfway through, that's my problem. Not your, Well, it's your problem to worry about over the weekend, but I'm not going to let it hurt you, <laughs> okay? So here's what I would like to do. Let me pull up PowerPoint. I'm still, we're still going to learn all of the, um, all of the content that's in that outline. That's not what I'm talking about addressing. What I'm talking about is shifting the balance of what I consider an exam right now. Because I'm asking you to do more than subsequent classes are going to have to do in the lab environment. Okay? And I'm going to, since we have to do that, I want to let that be to your advantage. So here's, here's the way that I'm going to start approaching this. Uh, we're going to treat it. <laughs> you ever had the feeling that it just wasn't meant to be one day? So we can go home? Not quite. Let me try again there. Something about integrity and PowerPoint just really don't like each other. And I, we haven't been able to find out what it is. Okay, dial planning, there we go, beta one. Okay, slideshow, slideshow <laughs> from current. Okay, so what we're going to do is start treating the lab experiences as a beta test. Now, the problem is once we do that, basically what we're saying is we're pretty sure the first time you go through this, there are going to be issues. I'm perfectly comfortable with you guys ferreting those out. In fact, I'm counting on it in what I do. The problem is I didn't stack this course with your doing that in mind. It's going to extend the amount of time we need for each lab, and I'm okay with that. I would rather have you learning hands-on in this stuff than anything else we can do. You're going to learn it. What I am going to do uh, in the grades for the class, I had uh, a portion of the content as exam score. I'm going to shift some of what I was planning to do as written exams or standalone exams, which I'm not a big fan of anyway. I'm going to shift a good portion of that into what I was planning to do with lab evaluation. In essence, what I think we'll do is the first cut through a lab, and I'll go through this specifically in a minute. First cut through a lab will be what you just did. <laughs> You'll go through it, probably you're going to find problems, and you're going to do a formal written assessment of what goes on. 
I got to 3B4 and got this error message, or this didn't work, or the phone already existed, things like that. Beta testing, you're going to document that, and that's going to be your first lab write-up. You'll turn it in, we'll make adjustments, or choose not to. It may be too big to deal with at that point. Assuming we can make adjustments, and in this, for example, all the ones on this lab, I think we can, what we'll do is, I'm saying we, it's my responsibility, I'll make adjustments to the procedure, give it to you, and ask you to go through it again. Ideally, you'll go through it exactly like I planned. You'll end up with the system, learn the content I wanted. Probably there'll be at least one of these labs where there'll be other issues. <laughs> you know? So anyway, we're going to treat it that way. Those write-ups are going to be most of your lab score, you know, doing the testing on that and the discussion that we're going to do about it. Once you get through that, once we get through one successfully, we'll do what I was intending to do in here, which is I was going to give you, using exactly that same lab setup, give you a set of requirements, and you have to come up with all of the configuration to make a system meet those requirements. Well, you're going to have to program a system from blank without a cookbook procedure. Okay. I'm still going to do that. That's the piece that I'm going to let count as exam credit more. I'm not going to let it hurt you. Okay. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Um, I don't know the math exactly because I didn't figure out the balance I wanted to do on this until about half an hour ago. But Please trust me that I won't let this hurt you. We'll learn the telephony and we'll go forward. Are you okay on that? Okay. So in the procedure this time, um, what we had worked through is factory defaulting the system. And I used a factory default configuration or a factory default set of instructions that said to factory default items in the NetVanta series, here's what you do. And it works. It just doesn't do everything. And there exists another document that if I had just opened my eyes, I would have seen, but I didn't. There exists another document that says for NetVanta 7000 series, exactly what we're using, you use a different procedure. <laughs> the upshot of this is when I had you factory defaulted, it does make a factory default, but only so far. It leaves, you know, what you see in terms of router, switch, most of the system is a factory default. It leaves existing IP phone configs in place. And that really isn't even that big a problem, except that I've set this world up for you to add a phone. Well, now you can't add a phone because it's going to error out. You know? <laughs> okay. Um, You know, obviously what I'll do is change the procedure to update those. The IP phone configs, we haven't covered it. You may have noticed when you did your directory in the command line, excuse me, in the command line, you may have noticed a file called Dyn Voice dash startup. That's actually where the IP phone configs live. It's think of that file as a file of files, you know, a Word document with several files stacked up, if you will. That's where all of your IP phone configs live. We'll have to blow that away. Okay. I thought that happened in the factory default procedure, and it doesn't. Second thing, existing users are left in place. This one actually surprised me, because the users actually are in the config, but they stay. <laughs> Some of them, not all of them. Some of them stay. And I'm going to update the procedure to do that. What I'm kicking around, my goal for this lab was for you to deal with the controls for dial planning that have to do with dial planning. I really didn't want you to have to do anything with building phones or building users or any of that thing at this point. It's just as we've talked about with that identity piece, what's the identity? It is the phone number that you attach to a user. That's the identity. So it's, it's hard to separate those two. And I'm going to have to think through how to do it. What I am kind of leaning toward, if I can make it work, is 
let's see. Oh, yeah, I'll get to that one in a second. The third one was the uh, phone setup. Some of you ended up, I, the lab sent you here, but some of you ended up interpreting where you were that you needed to do more. Because when you get to this point, you got to this after I had had you delete dial plan entries under system setup dial plan. But you get to this point and you open it up and you go to phone settings and lo and behold, there's this whole list of dial plan entries. The reason is when the phones boot, they load from a file called IP global configs. And that's the default configuration for a phone. My intention, and it made perfect sense to me when I wrote it, was that, oh well, you'd see that and just realize that we were adding dial plan templates to this. Looking at it now, I see how confusing that would be. So what happened is you started editing in there. That actually causes problems. And so we're going to think, think through how to get around it. The solution to all of these is I will probably build a startup-config and a dynevoice-config. I'm going to go ahead and pre-populate your phones, if you will, and have you load that instead of load a factory default. You'll load our default for this lab. And then at that point, what you'll end up doing is manipulating the dial plan entries. This may be a case where you come back and we've got bigger issues. Um, that's the best way I can think of, though, to move us forward. It's definitely going to have some good discussion <laughs> going on when we get out of here. I'm not going to do that this time because I didn't prep you to collect information. I just kind of threw you in the middle by accident. Didn't mean to. Um, from the point of view of having you learn this, I'm just going to use the beta development as a test. I mean, this is what we're going to do. I think I've been working with Adtran this morning. I think we've got a way we can do this that'll let you do it. If not, we'll go back and I will, at the very least, clarify what you have to do in that global config file. Okay. Did anybody get past the point where you're in global config and you are, um, let me look at the procedure so I know exactly what was being said there. This would have been in step four, part C. No, actually it's not. Yeah, okay. So in step B, step three, part B, uh, number six, I take you down to uh, IP globals and default settings. In that extension dial stream, that was where I intended you only to add templates. To that, and I can see now where it was confusing, and I think I think you wrote me that you were deleting there, and it'll let you delete stuff that we don't need to delete. And understand, you're not going to hurt these systems. I mean, at worst, you're going to make them not work with your config. I kind of expect that to happen a lot anyway. <laughs> Let's be honest; it does to me. So that's okay. You're not going to do anything to hurt these systems remotely. Yeah, but. But I can see where it was confusing from a procedure point of view. So uh, I'll work through that one. My, my preference would be to have a world where you don't have to build the phones, but I'm not sure I can do that. We'll, we'll find out. Um, let's see, on in there. One, th one thing we did have, realize you've seen by reading through this that this is more than just a one, two, three, four, five step. There's a lot of reading in here that goes along with it. Almost everybody, judging by the directories in the four machines, almost everybody 
took that initial config and renamed it lab2-startup.factory.un, which was a generic file name. And in the lines above it, I said, I want you to use the file name lab2.startup.factory.un, where UN is your logon username. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll make... I'll, I'll do something like using, you know, 47 point type or something <laughs> so that you know what to replace. But please do, don't, I know the temptation is to go through the numbered pieces and yay, 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 already talked about the stuff in there. I really do expect you to read the pieces in here. <laughs> and so, yes, sir? No, no, that doesn't make sense. I will, pro I will have... The question was, will lab still be due on Wednesday? The short answer is, I don't know enough to tell you a due date yet because I just kind of figured out how I was going to approach this problem so half an hour ago. It was, due, it was due Wednesday, but I'm not going to hold you responsible for um, that. I go ahead and still try and do the no, wait, wait. What, I'm, what I will do is figure out what I'm going to do on this one particular lab. I'll set a reasonable due date for that. Typically, my my opinion of reasonable, given what we have in here, is if I give it to you on Monday, you should be able to complete it by Friday morning. Okay. If it's a small, and I'm leaving myself a little bit of wiggle room, if it's a small <laughs> procedure that doesn't have a lot involved in it, I may shorten that. Mostly I like the idea of you being able to take your time, and I'm not going to shortcut it too much. My goal from a teaching point of view by the time we get in here on Friday and have time to go in, sit down at the equipment together if we need to, discuss what's going on, I want to be able to take advantage of that. So I'm trying to back time things from Friday of each week. I won't always be able to. That's just, that's just the practicality of it. But uh, that's my goal. For this week, I don't know. I will post it on Canvas. What I ideally, the solutions that I have will work and I can get a updated procedure to you posted tomorrow. You can do it and we'll finish it by Friday. We'll have to wait and see. Okay. Are you guys comfortable with what we're doing? I don't want I don't want you to feel like I'm pulling the rug out for money, but I've got to make an adjustment here. <laughs> so is that okay? One last time Yeah, let me think about this one a long time in a room full of people who like learning with their hands, you know. <laughs> I'm thinking you might. Um, you might. The problem is it's going to take time to discuss through things because you're going to run into things that I didn't remove that you don't know about. And so we've got to kind of explain what caused the problem. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a great way of learning. And I wish I could work it out to where that was the way we did it. But you know, with four systems and this many people, I just can't. But, Please trust me. I mean, I am expecting hard work from you. You all know me well enough. I do expect you to work hard. I expect you to do clear writing. Uh, a hot tip, the procedure doesn't work. is isn't going to be sufficient beta testing. <laughs> you know? um, I do expect hard work from you on that, and I expect due diligence on working through this. But I'm also not going to hold you responsible grade-wise for me developing labs, okay? So, um, question, <coughs> questions over this? So what we'll, just to review, what we're going to do, this is after we kind of get into this, give us a, this week to kind of adjust. You are beta testing these labs. There's no way around it. Uh, I'm just going to recognize that in the way I grade. I'm going to basically shift points from exams into the lab procedure. I'm not going to change the percentages, but I'm going to shift points so the total number of points come in. And I will tell you as I'm doing that, I don't know. I haven't thought through it enough, and I've learned the hard way not to do that on the fly. So <laughs> I will let you know what the changes are. Um, the first pass will be just like what we did. I'll give you procedure that, to my knowledge, is in good shape and ready to go, uh, and you'll work through it. What's your deliverable for that pass through 
will be a beta test report. Went through at 3B, it said this, I got this error message, or at 4C, I saw this and it's confusing, but I figured out that I could do this, you know, that sort of thing. If there's nothing there, that's fine. But write it down, you know. I mean, you'll have a report from each one of these, and I'll come up with a form for you to do it. I've got to think through that. You know, like I said, your beta testing, verification, and documentation of what you do. First one is be sure that you're following the procedure, that like the file name thing. Okay. Second one, document anything you see or document what doesn't work. You know, I clicked this and I was supposed to go here and I went here. Okay. Second pass, we'll update, make whatever adjustments we need to, and you'll go back through it. My goal for that second one is for the second lab to be the final working lab. What we'll do in years after this is just simply delete that first pass through, and this will be what I hand to students. That's where we're going. Okay. Um, and that's basically the way we'll proceed. Okay by you? Okay. Well, let us address the, and let me understand, I'm gonna, I can tell I'm not going to be able to stop saying us. Jimmy Figgins has kind of an, uh, a background that lends itself to helping develop these labs. I cannot spend the time, I, I don't have the time to spend, I'm already up here. I don't have the hours in the day to do it. That's all I can say. What Jimmy is doing is taking his background and is working ahead do doing that first cut. We'll sit down, discuss what I want to accomplish in the lab. We'll decide an approach. He'll actually go through and document the procedure. I write all the, anything that doesn't have a number beside it, probably I wrote, okay? And then I give it back to him, he runs through it. I would, you know, my hope and the reason I stopped, I actually had this laid out for the whole class and then I deleted the beta test part because I was like, hey, we can do it. <laughs> the problem is we're so far past basic config, I didn't pick up on, for example, if you take this with an absolutely fresh system and you're the first one through, it's going to work just great. If you're the second one, and you follow the procedure exactly, it's going to work partially. What won't work depends on what the last person did. Okay? <laughs> and so that's what, we're, and that's what we ran into. We happened to hit a combination where what he did in the lab didn't affect me in a way that we could pick up on this lab. So anyway. Um, Content on the lab, final form, grading, weight, way we approach it, that's all me. What Jimmy's doing is working through uh, a specific path in the hardware that we're looking. You can, um, I will sometimes ask him to work with you in lab to troubleshoot. Mostly I would prefer that you come through me for it so I can filter that. You know, he's got other classes and stuff to deal with too. But that's why I keep saying we, okay? Okay, guys, we'll... Uh, get it figured out and get a beta up. I'm, my goal is to get it up to you by tomorrow so that you can take it and try this again and we'll go from there. See ya. Sorry for the confusion, but thanks for working with me on it.